I think that we should discuss the re problem. No, not this one. No, not this one either. This one. Chinese Premier Xi Jinping hinted on Wednesday that China would use their dominance of the rare earth element production market to hit back at the U.S. in the ongoing trade war. Now, if that's not worth some roasted opinions, then I don't know what is. Rare earth elements are 17 metals used in the production of everything from batteries to turbines. Most importantly, they are used in tech applications like semiconductors and permanent magnets. That makes them a critical part of anything which uses computerization, including the defense industry, telecommunications, computers, and many other products. Chinese REE production supplies about 90% of the global market every year. About 80% of all REE consumption inside the United States is supplied by Chinese imports. Naturally, the markets have just panicked. Global markets already facing a significant loss in market cap during May dropped even more this past week. There was a headlong flight into bonds, partially brought on by the trade war and partially by the results of the EU elections. Stocks of REE production and manufacturing companies in China jumped through the roof as well. But is this all just a panic? Fortune magazine seems to think so. They published an article on Wednesday about the situation, which flies in the face of many other articles published this week. I'll link Fortune's article in the description below. The sky is falling! Not so fast, Chicken Little. Now, contrary to the nomenclature of their classification, rare earth elements aren't actually all that rare. There are many deposits worldwide, including several in the United States. Mountain Pass, situated in California, is the only operational U.S. rare earth element mine, but it has a mothballed refinery on site, which the company says it will put back into production by the end of 2020. There are other suppliers for rare earth element ores and refined products too, such as Australia, Japan, and even Estonia. They could be well situated to grab the U.S. rare earth element market if China refused to ship the ore concentrates which we import. But if they aren't that rare, Rose, then why don't we supply ourselves? It's because rare earth element production and refining is hard on the environment. Rare earth element ores are often associated with thorium, a radioactive element which is unstable in most known isotopes, highly reactive, and mildly or moderately toxic depending on what chemical forms with the thorium. That makes the tailings from rare earth element mining a potential environmental hazard. What's more, the processing of rare earth element ores into rare earth metals produces toxic waste products which have to be mitigated as well. This led, in the past, to environmental regulations in the United States which increased the cost of processing rare earth element ore, which together with a flood of inexpensive Chinese rare earth element imports from production subsidized by the Chinese government, led to the cessation of processing at Mountain Pass and eventually the closing of the mine. This was just part of a global attempt to corner the rare earth element market. An attempt to reopen the Mountain Pass mine and production facility in 2008 lasted for about seven years before bankruptcy shut down production again. The mine has since reopened in 2018, and thank goodness for that because it's the only rare earth element mine in operation in the United States. You see, China really did secure a dominant position in the rare earth element markets because of the huge deposits available to them. Most rare earth elements are pretty common. Some are even as common as copper deposits. But economically viable deposits are not as common. China is sitting on massive reserves of rare earth elements. And all they had to do was to simply open up the mining of those deposits and start processing to grab a significant share of the market. Because of their less restrictive environmental laws and those subsidies I mentioned, Chinese rare earth element concentrates and products are significantly cheaper than those produced in other countries. That allowed China to grab that near monopoly of the global markets and became the reason why so many American companies relocated their tech component production to China. Now here's where it gets interesting. 
China required that those foreign tech companies share their component designs with domestic companies in order to get permission to use the rare earth elements to produce their technology in China. And bam, the Chinese economy gets bootstrapped out of the 19th century in a decade. Along the way, that allowed them to secure their position in the global tech, rare earth element, and semiconductor markets, and it also created one of the chief complaints which precipitated the U.S.-China trade war in the first place. So why does Fortune say that China isn't in as powerful a position as everyone else says? Simply put, American companies don't normally import or concentrates from China as much as they import components that they have made over there. And that is a much more difficult assortment of exports to shut down. If China imposes tariffs on the finished components, the American companies will simply have to pay more for them, which will pass on to the consumer and slow down consumption somewhat. What it won't do is stop consumption. American companies will bite the bullet, as will American consumers, as they find other means for obtaining those components. For example, since Japan just found a huge new source of rare earth element ores, and they already have an established industry for these kinds of components, they could shift component production to Japan. China might shut down shipments of rare earth element ores to Japan in response. After all, they've done that before. However, because they've done it before, the world knows that they need non-Chinese sources of rare earth elements and they've been developing them for at least the last decade. What China will do if they make this move is prompt foreign manufacturers to stop buying Chinese rare earth element concentrates and products. Shifting trade balances will boost other rare earth element producing and component manufacturing countries collapse a significant portion of the Chinese industrial sector, and leave them with even less leverage over the United States. Now, China did make another move this week by canceling goodwill orders of soybeans from America. That's understandable considering the fact that they've lost about 30% of their swine herd, and the primary reason that they are importing soybeans from America is to produce animal feed for those pigs. However, the rest of the world cannot supply China's soybean needs indefinitely. Sooner or later, they will be buying those soybeans from the United States. So although China may inflict a short-term crimp on American farmers, in the long term, it will not work either. What it boils down to is that China is in a desperate situation and unwilling to admit it. The United States and other foreign countries actually have the upper hand in this trade war. If everyone outside of China will stop panicking, that is, there's really no need to <coughs> about rare earth elements after all. 